It started so simply, as these things often do. I felt a weird stiffness in my right big toe on a Saturday morning as I pulled on my flip-flops. I simply rolled my eyes and hoped that a day walking around would loosen it up. It didn't. That night, the pain was so bad that even putting a blanket on the offending digit would wake me out of a sound sleep. I spent all day Sunday with my foot propped up on a pillow, feeling a bit self-pitying and futilely trying to ice it while dutifully mainlining Tylenol and Advil uh, in a vain attempt at fixing it. By the time I saw my doctor on Monday, the diagnosis was clear. You have gout, <laughs> my very old, inflappable Greek doctor said to me. <laughs> in the same flat, emotionless tone he'd used since I first moved back to San Diego, and inexplicably back to his same underwhelming practice. <laughs> now, I used to wonder if he had that affectless voice for everything. Birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, bank robberies, <laughs> prostate exams. <laughs> but I always stopped before the scenarios got even more salacious than that. Tell me, TJ, have you been eating a lot of organ meats or heavy creams? <laughs> he eyed my t hipster t-shirt and weird glasses. Maybe a lot of fancy beers? <laughs> that time the flat boys almost had like a smidgen of judgment just for flavor. <laughs> what? What? No. I'm vegan for Christ's sake, and I don't really drink beer. And that's when I found out that a site being the king's disease, and generally associated with old dudes in crowns, lazing about while eating the entire Game of Thrones or Medieval Times menu, complete with tin cups of ale, gout is actually fucking genetic. <laughs> Less than one-eighth of cases come from diets, so all I have to say about that is, thanks a lot, Grandpa, for the crappy gout genes and some trauma. <laughs> Clearly, however, over-the-counter over Advil wasn't going to fix my excruciating toe. My doctor prescribed prednisone, which was my first ever steroid. For those of you who have never been on prednisone, <laughs> let me tell you, it's way, way, way more effective than over-the-counter painkillers. And it destroys inflammation with a terrifying laser-like precision. It's also like if you're Dr. Chekhov and decided to freebase Mr. Hyatt's blood for fun. <laughs> Side effects include irritability, bordering on extreme rage, frequent urination, rashes, appetite, insomnia that will meet in grade 3 a.m. manifestos, and a sense of rippling power radiating all throughout your body without any productive outlet. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's just one problem with that. That's like a regular me. <laughs> like dialed up by a factor of <laughs> if you haven't met me before, I'm so sorry, you're welcome. Um, I'm just as likely to wear a caftan or a jumpsuit or a wrap dress after bench pressing 450 pounds, and just before I shove my face with whatever array of non-fucking organ meats I can find in front of me. Yeah. This prednisone was asking for trouble. <clears throat> now, magically, by my second pill, I was cured. However, since prednisone is the dark product of an enraged powerlifting witch somewhere, you have to come off it in stages. And I was worried about the potential side effects. However, I just felt slightly hungrier, maybe angrier than usual. But how can you tell when your default is usually already a little grumpy and volatile? You just disguise it with bright fabrics. <laughs> On my third day, beginning my tapering off the wonder steroid, I decided to celebrate by spending the afternoon at the zoo with a friend. Just being able to walk for only three feet felt like an idle flex on my intransigent body. Honestly, I was astonished at how good I felt. Sure, I was a little breathless, a little sweaty. Otherwise, though, I was a champion! My foot didn't hurt anymore. I felt incredible. It felt amazing. I had to pee every 11 minutes. <laughs> Otherwise, though, I was golden. I made my way into the zoo, and I walked at a brisk pace. Look what I can do, I thought loudly and smugly to myself. Fuck you, Gato. <laughs> and that's when I got a text from my friend to meet at the Australian section, famous for its koala enclosures. I walked jauntily onward. When I got there, 
I waved to a friend, marveled over modern medicine, and began scrutinizing the usual assemblage of sleepy marsupials, inevitably clinging to fake-ass branches and dead to the world. And that's when something weird started to happen. As I looked at the koalas, something changed. I looked at them, and I felt rage. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at them, all I saw were puffy, entitled, <laughs> balls of fur. <laughs> I knew that koalas were frequently intoxicated from the eucalyptus they consumed. And I also knew that many a koala was also chock full of STIs, namely chlamydia, the particular scourge for koala populations in Australia. And so I found myself looking at the sleepy time little real Pokemon. Perpetually hot! And you're riddled, riddled with sexual disease, not unlike my friend David College. And something Every snapped. <laughs> All I could feel was a blinding, all consuming rage. Look at that. Look at them. Smug in their little ursax trees, sleeping! These koalas were dicks! They were just napping haughtily while everything went to hell around them, around us. I hated them. I hated them so much. Something about this felt very off. Very wrong. But I was on fire with rage, and I felt my mouth whispering under my breath, Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so my friend, who was still standing next to me, looked up in alarm and said, Are you cursing? I think who was. <laughs> gestured at the fundamentally innocent and sweet antipodian animals I was wholeheartedly defeated. <laughs> and in that moment, I snapped to attention. I was suddenly aware of what I was doing and just how ridiculous it was. I was a full-grown adult cursing out sleeping marsupials on a Tuesday afternoon, and I couldn't stop. <laughs> The rage inside me was so strong, I felt like I had stoked a bonfire that kept growing and scorching and burning everything around me. I felt tears pooling in my eyes as I turned to my friend and said with a shudder, I hate them. I'm just so mad at them. And I don't know why the koalas are so neat. <laughs> My friend, who has a PhD in communication, is much wiser than me, raised an eyebrow. Because you are on fucking rage drugs, baby. Go the fuck home. <laughs> oh my god, I thought, she's right. This is my brain on drugs. On dark magic witchcraft pills. <laughs> I can't stop myself. I sniffled as I started to cry in earnest, my rage still directed at those motherfucking koalas. And it also still the shade of the whole event. Also, I had to pee. <laughs> I dabbed at my eyes, streaming with fury tears. Yeah, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> Fuckers, I thought. <laughs> and the koalas had trudged away. So, mercifully, the tapering of the prednisone worked and I returned to a less insatiably ragey human by the next day. And that was it, the pinnacle of my bizarre gout experience, as I started taking a daily pill called allopurinol dun, 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 to stop me from getting gout again. Unfortunately, allopurinol doesn't always work. I had another flare-up of gout exactly six months later. This time, however, I recognized the signs, got my miracle steroids of dark magic power, 
and waited for the drugs to do their thing. But I realized I knew just what I had to do as I tapered off, alternating between insomnia and nonstop pee breaks. I had to go under the influence and apologize <laughs> to those sleepy, slutty, little eucalyptus junkies. <laughs> I had to make it right to the toilets. <laughs> So, like any rational adult would do, I went back to the zoo. <laughs> Alone, with no witnesses. I was terrified, anxious that I would snap again. And instead, as I cautiously picked my way to the front of the exhibit, I saw, to my immense relief, that I felt basically nothing. <laughs> I looked at them, and they looked at me, and I realized that they were cute. I was just a full-grown adult looking at koalas on a weekday afternoon in a jumpsuit. <laughs> Thank Christ. <laughs> hey, I whispered to the koalas apologetically, and in that moment, it seemed like the best idea to sound like Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was an asshole before. But all are okay. Chomeria, chomeria. And of course, they didn't respond because they're koalas. And a mom walking with her two kids looked over at me like I was a grown-up talking to koalas on a special episode of The White Lotus. And still, I'd done what I'd come to do. I apologized. It was time to go home. I had triumphed. Patted myself on the back mentally as I wound my way back towards the zoo's exit. I'd survived gout. I had not been a hateful AKA anti-koala asshole. <laughs> I had fixed it. <laughs> Thank goodness, as I still felt the dark power of the demon drug surging in my veins. I felt like Bruce Banner after finally making peace with the Hulk inside of him. If this version of the Hulk should rightfully be banned from Australia. I was so busy self-congratulating, I didn't see the person in front of me. And I walked right into them. I bounced back, apologized instinctively, and as I slowly took in the figure in front of me, I realized a few things. First, I wandered directly in front of the exit from one of the many shows directed for kids that takes place at the zoo in the afternoon. And of course, I walked into a performer just leaving the nearby amphitheater. I realized immediately that this person was tall, really tall. And that's when I realized I hadn't walked into a person. I'd walked into a performer in an animal costume, <laughs> a koala costume. <laughs> The goofy fucking grin of the mask looked at me, mocking me. The giant koala exaggeratedly waved and put a friendly paw on my shoulder. Hello! He said. I felt the rage rise within me once again. Hi! He said. I looked the koala man right in his fucking eyes and said one clear sentence through clenched teeth. Baby Jesus is testing me and I will not give in today. I turned directly on my heel, wincing a little bit because it was the gout toe, and walked away from performers and koalas and zoos and the fear and the anxiety of my body not being mine to control. But at least, I thought, as I gingerly pushed my churlish toe on the accelerator as I left the zoo's parking lot, I didn't punch out a full-grown man in a koala costume <laughs> this time. 